That's right, men are horrible misogynists and the women's are helpless victims. But unless you've been living in a coma for the last decade, you probably knew that already. Now, the latest piece of damning evidence that men are pure evil comes from a joint study, and I use the word study very loosely here, by the British Trades Union Congress and the Everyday Sexism Project, which doesn't sound at all like it would be a biased organisation with an interest in finding, I don't know, instances of everyday sexism. But let's have a look at the source. And sure enough, on page four, key findings, first bullet point. Quote, more than half, 52% of all women polled have experienced some form of sexual harassment. So this shocking figure comes from here on page 12 and is accompanied by a footnote, which makes for some interesting reading. Quote, all figures, unless otherwise stated, are from YouGov PLC, from an overall sample of 3,524 Great British adults, 1,533 adult women were happy to be asked about workplace harassment. So I assume the other 2,000 were male. Of this, 801 women who are or have ever been in paid work said they have ever experienced some form of workplace harassment. Field work was undertaken between 4th and 6th of January 2016. The survey was carried out online. The figures are not weighted or representative of all those who have experienced workplace harassment, but obtained from those who consented to be asked questions of this topic. Now that's very important because whenever you do a survey, in order for it to be an accurate reflection of the larger population you're trying to survey, you need to take a representative sample. So that makes headlines like this unfounded. But how many people actually check sources and read past the headlines? Certainly not those at The Guardian or the BBC. So with that in mind, let's have a look at the rest of this non-study. And this graph on page 13 is probably the best place to start. And what you'll notice straight away is that incidents of sexual harassment is split into the last 12 months and older than 12 months, or basically ever. And that the vast majority of so-called sexual harassment incidents occurred sometime prior to the last 12 months. So that a 55-year-old woman that experienced sexual harassment in 1986 is counted in the blue bar. The other thing you'll notice is that the grey bars, the totals for each category, do not add up to 100%, because obviously... One woman may claim more than one type of sexual harassment. So the way to read this is not that in the first category, for example, that the grey bar represents approximately 9% of all incidences of sexual harassment, but that 9% of those reporting sexual harassment reported this type of harassment. And many of them may well have reported another type. So this data is limited by the fact that they don't give raw numbers and you have to guess from the bars the actual percentages. But if you're an Excel nerd like me, what you can do is cut this graph into Excel and make it transparent so you can more easily estimate the actual percentages with grid lines. And when you do that, you can get a better idea of the data. For example, we can say that 22% of the women that reported sexual harassment reported it in the last 12 months. Now you need to be careful here. That's not the same as saying that 22% of all women were sexually harassed at work in the last 12 months, because remember, approximately 52% of all women surveyed reported sexual harassment at work. So you have to cut the 22% by 52%. And so you can say that approximately 11% of women experienced sexual harassment in the workplace in the last 12 months. But of course, you can't even say that because remember, this is a non-representative sample. But even more important than that are the very dubious definitions of what constitutes sexual harassment in this non-study. Take the first category. Displays of pornographic photographs or drawings in the workplace. So I guess this could be a Playboy calendar hanging up in the mechanics workshop. Or it could be someone looking at a pornographic image on their computer, in the office, and you just happen to walk past. Probably not a good idea to look at porn in the office. But note that it doesn't say video. 
But does walking by a computer as someone looks, however briefly, at a pornographic image constitute sexual harassment? How about the next category and the most common source of sexual harassment in this non-study? Hearing colleagues making comments of a sexual nature about another woman or women in general in front of you. Now, if you make a comment like, doesn't Jane's ass look great in that skirt? You might want to consider who you say that in front of, or better still, consider not saying it at all. You don't have to say everything that comes into your head, but nor do you need to feel bad about having such thoughts. But what if two guys are standing in front of the water cooler, talking about watching Wimbledon the night before, and one mentions to the other that Maria Sharapova looked hot in her outfit on the court, and the other agreed, and you just happened to be in earshot. Does this really constitute sexual harassment? It's not directed at you. Do you find men admiring attractive women offensive? If the standard of what constitutes sexual harassment is your own subjective interpretation of what's offensive, then almost any comment about the opposite sex can be construed as sexual harassment. And furthermore, now everyone has to calibrate everything they say depending on who's around at the time and their particular propensity for offence taking. It becomes unworkable. Unless, of course, no one says anything that's not work-related. There are no jokes, no quips, no gossip, no casual talk, no compliments, nothing. A humorless, grey world. Oh wait, that's exactly what feminists want, isn't it? Next, receiving unwanted messages with material of a sexual nature on social media. What does this even mean? Are the messages coming from people at work, or you're getting messages whilst at work from people who you don't even work with? Not clear. Unwelcome sexual advances. I think we can all agree that asking for a blowjob in the storeroom is inappropriate. But I wonder where these incidences are happening. I mean, is this some drunk idiot propositioning someone at the end of year party? Or moving in to kiss someone based on a combination of alcohol and mixed signals. In the latter case, it could be a problem if the rejected party holds a grudge and uses it against the person later on in the workplace. But what's wrong with, hey, sorry, I misread the signals. Yeah, no problem. No harm, no foul. Does everything need to be escalated to a formal complaint? Next, sexual assault, e.g. unwanted touching of the breast, buttocks or genitals, attempts to kiss. So here we now have a category that actually rises to the level of sexual assault under the law, with the possible exception of the attempts to kiss as I described in the context of a drunken night out where signals were misread. So 1% of women reported this type of harassment in the last 12 months, and this type of harassment constitutes 0.6% of all sexual harassment reported in this non-survey. The next category, unwanted touching, e.g. placing hand on lower back or knee. Well, just keep your hands to yourself. I don't know why you need to be putting your hand on someone's knee at work unless you're a doctor or a physio. And no more congratulatory attaboy slaps on the back because... What a fag! Exactly. Unwelcome jokes of a sexual nature. Again, be careful where and around whom you invoke the two lesbians walked into a bar routine. Come on, guys. You know by now, it's only funny when a man is the butt of the joke. According to the Orange County DA's office, Catherine Q. Becker is accused of cutting off her husband's penis with a knife, Uh. taking his penis and throwing it into the garbage disposal. She's been charged with felony torture and aggravated mayhem. Police say Becker attacked him because he filed for divorce. She's being held. She goes, that'll teach him. (laughs) Serious sexual assault or rape. I think we can get on board with that. And the good news is no woman reported being seriously sexually assaulted or raped at work in the last 12 months. But I suppose that kind of headline wouldn't incite the requisite amount of outrage. And the final category, 
comments of a sexual nature about your body and or clothes. Again, I need more clarification here. Are we talking your tits look great in that top or that jacket looks good on you? A basic compliments out. Or is it completely subjective? So for example, if a guy pays you a compliment and you like him or you like the compliment, then that's okay. But if he's not your type or the compliment was not to your liking, then is it sexual harassment? Again, you can't have a standard for sexual harassment that's based on the subjective interpretation of the offence taker, although that is the direction that feminists would like to take it. Listen and believe. So basically this so-called survey is flawed from the very beginning, given that it's a non-representative sample and because it lumps in serious crimes like sexual assault and rape with overhearing a comment about the opposite sex. It conflates real sexual harassment and violence with oversensitive offence taking. So where does this leave you if you're a guy working in an office? Well, by all means, engage in work-related conversation with women. Maybe you can even talk about the weather. Possibly even talk about what you had for lunch. But don't mention you had the chicken breast or the thigh. Maybe become a vegan. I think eating meat is now offensive anyway. But that's it. No jokes, no compliments, no passing comments or observations about members of the opposite sex. And if someone asks you about Miley Cyrus's latest music video, just walk away. Say you don't listen to music. You don't know who she is. Plead the fifth. Unless, of course, you're gay. Or you could just identify as gay.